So today I'm not going to talk about dealing with small data challenge in a startup environment. So it's like a challenge of applying machine learning when you don't have high quality data and when you don't have a clear goal to optimize. So a little background about me. My name is Liang Wu and I am now a machine learning data scientist from Airbnb. And before that, I, I did my PhD in Arizona State, focusing on building robust machine learning mod models when the data is noisy and the labels are inaccurate. And uh, so before we introduce the problem, so this is like the comfort zone of a different machine learning methods. So the x-axis is uh, so whether you have a clear objective for your problem, like what to optimize. And for the y-axis, it's the data quality. So do you have a, like a reliable, unnoisy training data? Do you have a lot of labels? And are your labels trustworthy? So when the objective is clear, like classifying cats and dogs from pictures, and you have a, like a lot of labels, and you have a lot of uh, reliable training data, like image net data set, then your problem, uh, like the, then the problem is a comfort zone for auto machine learning. So like the machine can learn it, uh, learns the parameters and like uh, super parameters all by itself. So when you have a clear objective, but the data quality is very low, like you don't have a, a lot of trustworthy data, then the comfort zone, then the comfort, comfort zone is for causal analytics. The example is like uh, try to predict where, like what Liang Wu is gonna do if uh, I didn't join the, I, I didn't attend the conference. Like uh, you have a clear objective, it's prediction of an action, but you, never, you will never have high quality training data because, it, because it's uh, counterfactual. So because I'm here, so you will never know what's the ground truth, the label, so it's causal analytics. So the, so when you have a high, high quality data, like a lot of data for training, but you don't have a clear goal, then the comfort zone is for reinforcement learning. So the problem is like a self-driving car. Like you know the, like you know that, like you, you don't know the label for each action in re reinforcement learning, but you want to optimize the long-term goal. So what you can do is you interact with the environment and try to like monitor the long-term gain, long-term reward for each action. So it's like a reinforcement learning. And for the empty one, the void one, so it's a, comfort, it's a no comfort zone for any method. <laughs> so when we talk about uh, machine, applica machine learning applications in startup, so that's in the no comfort zone. And uh, so today I will focus on search ranking algorithms. So for traditional web search and product search, so it's uh, mostly in the like uh, comfort zone for the auto machine learning. So we are not comfort because we never have clear goal, clear objective, and we don't have a lot of uh, high quality data. So like in each like a year annual planning meeting, we have different objectives. So I will talk about that later. So this is an example of a search. So because today I will mostly focus on search. So this is a, a, an example of search uh, for mostly like e-commerce. The first one is from uh, Etsy. So the second one is from Spotify and third one is from Airbnb. The, uh, it's very similar application. So what you do is you input a query and the search engine will like uh, browse the database and try to rank the products based on your contacts, based on your query and try to rank a list of application, like a list of items for you to buy or to visit. And uh, a little background about search ranking algorithm. So the most popular ranking algorithm is called learning to rank or like Tor. So it's a supervised learning task. So when we talk about supervised learning, we are like uh, more familiar with regression problem. So when we try to like uh, predict uh, like a probability of being true or false, and we are also more familiar with classification, like classify whether something is yes or no, true or false. And uh, when we talk about ranking, so we 
have a, a like a three kinds of uh, objectives. The first one is pointwise, second one is pairwise, and third one is listwise. I will go through them each. And for pointwise method, so it's very similar to regression problem. So for example, like uh, when we try to predict uh, each data example, in the, like uh, when we try to predict uh, a score for these four items, from item one, item two, to item four. So the score means uh, the ground truth label of the item, and the predict, the value of predict is uh, how the model is gonna predict the item. So in a pair, in a pointwise setting, the model is gonna learn each ad item individually. So for example, for the first item, the model predict is uh, 10.0. So it's independent from other items in the list. So the main disadvantage of uh, regarding ranking task as a regression task is uh, the model is like the model learning is very ineffective because the outcome of the search ranking algorithm is the rank list. So let's uh, imagine like we do one iteration of update, model update for this point wise model. So for the first round, we can see the for item two and item three, we predict something wrong. So because item two, the score should be 8.0, but we predict it to be 7.0. So we update one iteration, and this is the second iteration. So the prediction of uh, item two becomes 7.1, and uh, the prediction of the it third item becomes uh, 7.9. So it's like uh, optimizing towards the correct direction. But the problem is, after one iteration, the rank list remains the same. Like, it's not like a big enough change to help you change the ranking order. So you can imagine if we have like 1,000 iterations from pointwise based methods, maybe in like among the 900 iterations, most of the iterations, the ranking list won't change. But like we have limited, uh, when we have limited the computational power, so the regression-based methods, like pointwise-based methods, will be very ineffective. To solve the problem, a more popular uh, ranking object function is a pairwise. So it's a more like a classification task. So instead of focusing on each item individually, so this time we focus on pairs. So we try to find which pairs of uh, data examples are misranked. And for example, for the, like uh, in the previous example, we know item two and item three, they are in the wrong order because item two should be better than item three, higher ranked than item three. So instead of focusing on them individually, this time we do these two classification problems. So we will need to optimize towards like a the prediction of item two is uh, greater than the prediction score of item three. Like uh, that one is true and the next one is false. So this is more effective because every, every time we will change the ranking order, like uh, every time we update the model parameters. But it also has a problem. So it will overlook the top results. So what does it mean? So when you say, when you ask the mach machine uh, algorithm to focus on pairs, it will focus on every pair of the search results. But we know this is from Google search. So we know Google search has like many pages of results. So it will focus on every pair, like the first pair, like some pair in the middle and some pair on the second page or even third page, fourth page. And the best place to hide a dead body is uh, page two of Google search results. So because users won't care about the, like the long tail results, users' attention are most on the like a top of the first page. So pairwise methods will overlook the top results. So then the most popular methods today is uh, list-wise based uh, learning to rank methods. So what it does is it tries to utilize the like a list information, for example, we can assign a weight for each pair on the page. And for a pair on the top, it, it's gonna have a larger weight. And for a pair on the bottom, it's gonna have a, like a smaller weight. Then the method knows like which pair the model should focus. 
So here I denote like the pair of uh, the top two atoms should be, the weight of the top two pairs should be higher than the weight of the like a lower pair. And uh, that's the background. And so the question is, we have different object functions, but how do we find labels or how do we define labels? So traditionally in web search, like in Google or Bing, so what people do is they will hire a lot of uh, search, expert, search experts and they will see the results and they will manually label every result. Oh, this one is uh, so relevant. This one is not so relevant. But in e-commerce, this is uh, not uh, like possible because it's very personalized. So different customers will have different preferences in different times. And there will be like a equally similar items for many popular queries. So what uh, in e-commerce, what people usually do is we focus on the, the user feedback signals, like a user click and the user purchase. So given a query, if an item is uh, like very frequently clicked or purchased, we should uh, like a uh, higher rank it in the search results. And what are the possible labels? Here are the possible labels. So we may optimize click-through rate, like search advertisements. And uh, click-through rate means the number of clicks divided by number of impressions. And we can also optimize conversion rate. So the number of purchases divided by number of uh, impressions. And something maybe sounds like more strange is like a number of purchases divided by number of clicks. So basically we are trying to optimize purchase and we are trying to uh, punish the number of clicks. So this is um, mostly good for navigational search. So in navigational search, you, like uh, your customers already know what he or she wants to find. So at this time, the lower the clicks are, the better the search results are. So you don't want, like, uh, you already know what you want, but like, in the lousy search ranking algorithm, like you click so many times and find what you want on the third page. So that's a bad signal. So you want to punish number of clicks. And uh, we may also times uh, like have a weight, I has a, like a use press as a weight for the purchase rate. So this is uh, like a little more common in e-commerce, like when we have a purchase price. So, it, so this object function is tries to like uh, help those uh, uh, like expensive items that are not so like a commonly purchased, like a, to, to be ranked higher. Like uh, imagine if you use Amazon, Amazon and you wanna search like Apple, and if you like rank everything based on the raw number of conversions, like purchases, so the higher ranked ones are gonna be like uh, all about uh, cheap items, like uh, covers or something, protections. But you want the iPhone to appear, right? So it's also relevant. But the only thing that can higher rank it is that you need to utilize the press information. And uh, or we can use like press times the number of purchases divided by number of clicks. So if it's a navigational e-commerce search, your customers already know what he or she wants to buy, purchase. And uh, you also want to up rank the like, more expensive items, you may use this one, and uh, the target is to drive the revenue, while it pub punishes the purchase of uh, cheap listings. So we have three kinds of uh, like feedbacks, clicks. Clicks are mostly good for informational search, like Google. So you just uh, look for information, and uh, like if you click, it's a positive signal. But it may be noisy for navigational or transactional search. And we also have conversions. So conversion is mostly good for like a navigational search, like users already know what he or she wants to buy. And, uh, but it may be unfairly dominated by the like, uh, large, uh, large amount of uh, purchases of uh, cheap listings. And we may also use the purchase price. So it's uh, only used in transactional search and it helps uh, highlight the expensive but those like not so common purchase. I have a example here. It's like a quiz here, but you don't need to answer explicitly. So this is a 
I took the picture from uh, Etsy, so it's an e-commerce search. So I don't know how many people have used Etsy, so I don't usually buy things from Etsy, but whenever I want to buy some gifts, like for some events, for like anniversaries, I may go to uh, Etsy and, uh, and buy. So it's common for Etsy users to like uh, purchase an uh, item uh, like uh, every year or like uh, for several months because it's for gifts. And uh, now we, we may have a, like I have a question like, uh, is it more a navigational search or informational search or transactional search? So customers do come back to the website to purchase stuff. So it's a transactional, transactional search, definitely. And, but uh, even before the, like a, a user tries to buy something, like before a wedding, he, like a she or he wants to buy something, the customers will visit the website of like uh, buy nothing, but just uh, see what's available in Etsy. Like what's in Etsy that's different from other e-commerce websites. So then that's more informational. And when the user has an idea, oh, I want to buy that something, like uh, at a certain day, the customers will log in to the Etsy and the buy the exact stuff, then that's a navigational search. The user already know what she wants to buy and she wants to buy it quickly. So it's three applications in the same platform and we are not able to classify each user journey. We don't have labels. So this is an example of uh, how we optimize uh, uh, like search ranking in Etsy. So this is done when I uh, work when I interned in uh, Etsy la uh, last year. So the so everything here is published in uh, CIR 2018 paper. So what we try to do is uh, we try to optimize the, the entire user journey. So we try to optimize jointly optimize user clicks and the user purchases. So the user like the user purchase behavior is like the user will go to the website and the user will first compare different items. And there are two results, click or non-click. And if a user click, clicks one item, there are two behaviors, the user will purchase or not pur or non-purchase. And if there is purchase, and there will be a purchase price. And uh, in order to like, optimize the entire search process, so we propose this new objective function. So the first part, the blue part, is the probability of, of clicks. So we try to optimize user clicks. So this is uh, mostly for like, uh, those uh, informational search. User wants to see what's available on Etsy. And the second part is uh, the probability of purchase. So we try to predict whether a user is going to buy something. So this is uh, mostly for the transactional search part and the navigational search part. And how we solve the problem is uh, we try to maximize the joint, joint probability of the two events, and we assume the two events are independently. And the first, uh, and the first method, we use the FC, so C represents clicks, models the probability of uh, something being clicked. So this is a, like a, we call it a stage one of e-commerce search. So it's a, the stage when users try to choose a product to, to click. So this is more like a learning to rank, a, like a typical learning to rank application because users will see the results and compare different results and uh, find the relevant ones to click. And the second part, so if a product is already clicked, given the probability of the product is already, already clicked, and we have another function, FP, P represents the purchase, so FP tries to model the probability of a purchase. And we call this uh, like the stage two of e-commerce search. So it's like when users has, have a browsing, have browsed uh, like uh, relevant items and the users is gonna make a decision of purchase or not purchase. And, uh, oh, it's one thing. So if we times these two together, so this is the probability of clicks, uh, the probability of purchase. If we assume every, like a, a user has to click before a user like a purchase something. 
And uh, if we times the, the whole thing with price, then we are actually optimizing the GM way, like the revenue of the whole website. And uh, so this is the resultant model. So because we try to optimize the, the whole revenue, so this is the probability of purchase. So based on clicks and purchase, the two-stage two stage model. And we put the price as a weight in this stage. And uh, there is also a reason why we put the price here. Like we can put the price in the click model. We can also put the price in the purchase model. But we decided to put the purchase, purchase uh, like the price on the purchase model, the final model. And the reason is, uh, if we directly use price as a feature in the like a learning to rank phase, and you know, Etsy is like a, a two-sided marketplace. So every seller wants to uprank their own price, like uh, their own uh, items. If you use press as a feature in the first stage, the, then the sellers will be easily, like will be able to easily manipulate the system. Like uh, after the item being purchased once, he just increased the price to like $1 million for a wedding dress. Then because the weight is so high, then the wedding dress will appear in every like search results because the expected revenue is high. So that's why we put price in the like a final stage. And uh, so GMV, GMV means the like the like the total revenue of the website. And the S represents the search session. And for each search session, we have a, like a set of items in the search session. And the, the I is an item. So price of I is the price of the item times the probability of purchase. And uh, so this term can be easily optimized to, like, uh, based on sub optimization methods. And for the details, you may refer to the paper. And uh, we conducted experiments on real world data set, like from Etsy. And uh, it was uh, not so big data sets. We have like a three, around 300K search sessions. And uh, we tried to evaluate a model against uh, this state of the art, like uh, learning to e commerce search methods. We have uh, learning to rank methods as comparisons. We have purchase model, purchase prediction models as uh, comparisons, and these models like, uh, directly optimize uh, both clicks and purchases. And the evaluation metrics includes uh, two metrics. One is called NDCG. So NDCG is uh, like a commonly used uh, metric for evaluating a ranking order. And we propose a new method called a rev like a re metric for revenue. is the revenue at K. So this assumption is like a K means uh, like uh, K is a number, like one, two, three, a number. Like K means uh, if we, like in the offline experiments, if we put the correctly purchased uh, item in top K results, and the user is likely to buy it. So like if K is very small, it means like our customers are so lazy. Like uh, only if you put the right item on the first spot, spot the user is gonna buy. And if K is like uh, 100, it means the users is gonna go through 100 results and find the relevant one and uh, make a purchase decision. And uh, here are the results. So this is this is the results for the NDCG. And uh, so NDCG is uh, more for like evaluating the like uh, the ranking order based on the total revenue. And uh, we can see we didn't win on every task. So the uh, the first one, first column is a category of different methods, and our proposed method is the last one. And uh, the like, uh, for, we have three kinds of NDCG: click NDCG, and purchase NDCG, and the revenue NDCG. So the the NDCG is uh, calculated based on like, uh, for example, like clicks rate, purchase rate, and the uh, expected revenue. And uh, we have three results, training results, validation results, and uh, test results. So the only like, uh, effective one is the test results. But we can see the results to see like, whether some model overfits the data set. And we win 
uh, the proposal method wins uh, on two tasks, the purchase NDCG and the revenue NDCG. But still for the click NDCG, like for, for the informational search task, the best method is still the state of the art, uh, like a search ranking algorithm, click based, like a Lambda Mart. It's a list of ways, learn to rank method. And this is the experimental results of uh, revenue at K. So the assumption is the user is going to buy the like uh, the correctly purchased item in the offline experiments. If the item is put uh, is ranked in the top K position, and uh, so this is uh, the expected dollar value for each search session. So we can see in this task we. Uh, I think the proposal method wins every task. So for example, if the user is going to buy an item t ranked in top K results, so the proposal method is going to increase the like, expected revenue for each search session. Like on average, it's, uh, I think, uh, like uh, 30 more cents for each search session. Like uh, there's going to be 30 cents more revenue. And uh, I will have another example. But before we go to example, we see we have three kinds of feedbacks, clicks, conversions, and purchase price. So now I have another quiz. So now I'm working in Airbnb. And the product I'm working on is called Airbnb Experiences. I think it, most people are familiar with Airbnb. So you want to find uh, like some, a place to, to, like, to stay and uh, it's for home rentals. But we are launching this product uh, two years ago. So this is like a try to recommend what to do when you are like a traveling. So it's uh, like as a slogan, it's uh, one of a kind of activities hosted by locals. And here are the top results in Washington, DC. So is it a, so this is definitely a search ranking application. But is it informational, navigational, or transaction, transactional? So definitely it's not a, like an informational search. So otherwise, it will be a Google for local, local tours. You can just search on local, like uh, what are local activities I can do. So, but uh, in Airbnb experiences, we try to connect the local, like uh, local guys, the local experience, uh, like expertise, the experience hosts, like uh, the local experts with our like customers, like people who stay in Airbnb. So it's definitely not a, like, a, like a, a search engine for local tours, like a Google for local events. But is it a transactional? So do we want to, like, a, is our goal to maximize the number of uh, conversions? So still not really. Like uh, we try to, like optimize uh, for those uh, one of a kind activities. Like uh, this is like a startup idea, and we have some like a cultural mission. So we try to optimize. Uh, like a, for example, for Washington D.C., we don't optimize uh, for those places that are already over tourism, like uh, over tourism places. But we try to. So this is an experience like uh, to enable our customers to see the unique aspects of a city. So it's uh, even like, uh, I live in San Francisco. I sometimes uh, took the experiences in San Francisco because like you think you are familiar with the, the local area, but like there's some uh, secret uh, parts, like uh, secret legends you don't know about the city. So definitely we don't want to be uh, Amazon for local tours. But is it a, uh, like it's not transactional, it's not informational. Then is it navigational? Definitely no. Like uh, you don't even know what's Airbnb, Airbnb experiences. So how on earth like uh, you are gonna have an idea like, oh, I'm looking for this, I go to Airbnb experiences. So I think that's the day-to-day -day challenge for us to, to apply machine learning in a startup company. So because if it's uh, informational search, then the task is very easy. I just uh, optimize the click-through rate. But if it's a never, like a transactional search, if it's, it's just a, like Amazon for e-commerce or like a TripAdvisor, so what we can do is we optimize the conversion rate for each listing. And if it's navigational, that's even more easier. I just uh, optimize the conversions and the punish all the clicks. But it's not. 
And uh, what we propose is we try to optimize the quality of the e like uh, of the search engine. So our idea is uh, we don't really care about uh, like uh, when a user comes to the website, we don't really care about uh, whether the user will click on something or the user will purchase something, like a book something. All the user will book like an express an expensive item from the website. So if we care about uh, whether user click, it will be Google. If we care about the purchase like uh, conversions, it will be Amazon. If we care about the price, so it's also like Amazon some e-commerce websites. But as a startup, like as a startup product, startup startup company, what we care is the user impressions, like. Uh, after user visits your website, although he didn't click anything, purchase anything, or like uh, purchase uh, any expensive item, so we want the user to have a very good impression. So he will remember, oh, there is a unique experiences product on Airbnb, and in the future when the user like wants to buy something, wants to like book something when he is uh, in travel, the user will go back. So this is tricky because for click, for conversion, we can optimize it like directly. But for this one, the good impression for the like a culture of a startup product is like a very difficult to like a quanti quantify it. And also, like a, my personal experience is uh, so if you try to optimize clicks, so I used to work in uh, work for Bing when I was back in China study in China. So that's more uh, like a when you optimize for clicks and the growth is immediate. So when you click the, when you optimize the click through rate. So it's like when you launch an experiment, you are gonna see the difference of click through rate like right away within five minutes. And for the conversion rate, if you optimize for the conversion rate, you are optimizing for the growth. So the users are gonna buy more stuff, more purchases, more transactions. And when you optimize for the price, then you are optimizing for the profitability. So it's not very clear. It's uh, optimizing for the profitability. So you are trying to maximize your profits of the entire website. And uh, in 2018, we started a, like the revenue optimization like a project in Etsy because uh, that's like a, that season 2017. Etsy has some uh, like a crisis. So if uh, someone can like may recall, like uh, they cut off some, uh, lay off some workers, and I think uh, like one third of engineers, and the website. Uh, so many people think uh, Etsy, the growth of Etsy, the total revenue of Etsy will decrease and it, it will be purchased, uh, acquired by Amazon. So many people are pessimistic. Then we started a project to optimize for the profits. So when you include the booking, like the purchase price, then you are optimizing for the profitability. And in Air, like in Airbnb experiences, our product is more like a startup of a startup. We are really like a day one or even day zero startup. Like most customers don't really know there is a, such a product. So we try to optimize the quality. So this is a most more for the long-term growth. And we try to, so what we try to, Optimize is we try to boost the estimated user satisfaction after the purchase. So it's like uh, we try to optimize the five star reviews if a, if a user purchased something or booked something from our website. But this is very difficult. And we use uh, like a different methods to optimize towards this metric. And as I mentioned, this is like we have a uh, we have uh, like a good data. We have a uh, five-star review data, but we have unclear goals. So, how do we quantify like uh, quantify user satisfaction? So we use a lot of like a causal analytics method for this application. But because I like recently submitted the paper to a, like a double-blind conference, so we are not allowed to share the results. So, but stay tuned. So whenever like the paper is uh, like a publicly available, I will share the data or maybe codes on my like a personal websites. And uh, that's it. <laughs> there are any questions?
my understanding of the problem you were saying was, uh, first was with the Airbnb experiences, how do you quantify good search satisfaction, which is not necessarily clicks or transactions, but there was also this other challenge of uh, brought by small data, which was, uh, I think, in the summary of the presentation today. Uh, so it, this was not a small data problem, and it was purely a search satisfaction problem. Would that change how you would approach it? How would it? So when I talk about small data, I think I, like, uh, it consists of uh, two aspects. One is the quantity of the data, like uh, how much data you have. Another aspect is uh, like, uh, do you have labels? Like, uh, is your data usable? Like, uh, if we have labels for all the data, like all the search data, search log data, then we will have big data. But in this stage, we still have like, uh, small data. So we have, like, I have some examples. Like for example, like we have a lot of search logs every day, but like uh, let's say if a user clicks on, like uh, for example, like we recommend the the experiences our products every day, and let's say we want to see like uh, what what kind of items users are most interested, and uh, we can always see whatever you rank on the top, it's gonna be collect more by the customers. It's called position bias or positional bias. So if we directly use the clicks rate as a metric, then we are like overlooking the user, like the presentation bias of the problem. Because sometimes some users just click to see what's what's it. So like uh, one of our like large projects is to decompose these clicks like uh, into two factors. One is caused by the positional bias. One is caused by the like user's interests. So that's why like we need to apply the causal analytics here. And uh, if uh, this causal analytics uh, st uh, step is successful, then we will have big data. Yeah. Uh, so it really de depends, uh, but I think uh, if uh, unfortunately like uh, it's rejected by all these conferences we submit, we will probably release it uh, like early next year. Okay. Yeah. But still, it's like uh, really hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, good point, yeah, good point. Actually, yeah, I think the main difference like uh, from Airbnb experiences uh, and from other companies, I think it's uh, for other companies like Amazon, Google, Bing, I'd say we know what's, uh, what's to optimize. And the, the root cause, the true reason is uh, like because users know what this website is for. So users understand what I'm looking for on this website. Then the engineers and data scientists will be able to optimize the, like will be able to choose a metric to optimize. But for us, so every experiences, who knows what it is? So even your customers don't know, then it's very difficult for us to choose the correct metric. So when you add this new part to the So the the key intuition for the adding price. So we are not trying to like directly optimize like a, like a, we put the higher like more expensive uh, items on the top. So like I know there are some applications in the like in real world application like in the industry is sometimes we usually have two rankers like we call it like a first pass ranker or the mean ranker 
or some uh, second pass ranker. For the first pass ranker, like uh, we try to optimize, like uh, like what we, what we did, we try to optimize the relevance. Like for our application, we use a press to enhance the app, enhance the relevance. And uh, for some applications, we know, like uh, I know, there are some like second pass ranker to boost uh, like uh, more expensive listings to boost them on the top. So that application, like uh, that kind of application, like uh, that kind of secondary rankers, will harm the relevance. So we also tested something in Airbnb. And uh, I think for like uh, applications like uh, Etsy, e-commerce search, incorporating press doesn't necessarily promote the press higher. And if you directly boost, the, like use the second pass ranker, then like uh, you will see some irrelevant results on the top. It's a brilliant point, and uh, it's a uh, th like it's very difficult to have a, like a correct answer for the question. So what we try is uh, we present three kinds of NDCG: uh, click NDCG, purchase NDCG, and the revenue NDCG. So our proposed method uh, like uh, is the best achieve the best results for two for two tasks: purchase NDCG. So it means like uh, if we don't we don't consider price. Still, our method achieves the best results. So that's like a, what we try to use. But still, I think that's a brilliant point. Like, a, how can we find the have a, like a theoretically like a correct solution to like a decompose the like a contribution attribute the contribution to the two parts? I think that's very difficult. So what we do is empirically show the results. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the for the clicks, uh, yeah. So I still I don't have a because it's empirical results. I really don't have an answer, but I think that's a brilliant part to explore. Any other questions? I think uh, it's lunch time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.